All right, let's now take the previous video one step further. In the previous video, we looked at how to link in or append an object to our scene from another scene. But one of the severe limitations of what we just did is that when we brought in the, the car, the sports car, it was all different objects. You know, we had the door panels, we had the windshield, we had the mirror, we had all these different objects that while great in the original scene, because we want to be able to work on them individually, if we wanted to bring that car in and just animate it or just move it around or just use it as a single object, it's really a pain in the ass uh, because you don't want to have to move all of those objects as a single object or all together. You want to be able to just use one single control object and move it around. And you want that single control object to still be referencing the original data in the other file so that it's very easy to up update and propagate in your scene. And along with that, we also want the ability to just say, hey, we want to bring in one asset from another file and we want to be able to duplicate it as many times as we want and still have all of those duplicates referencing the original data. And this is where groups and specifically linked groups come into play. So let's go in and let's open up the, the sports car scene. And we're going to do something to this real quick. And we're going to select all of the objects that make up the car, just like this. And then we're going to go over to the object data panel and just take a look under the groups section. And we can see add to group. And if we click add to group, no group currently exists. So we first need to add a new group. And we can then call this group as, we'll just call it car. And you can see that the, the, the active selection, the last object I selected, has been turned green. This means that it is part of a group. And we don't really need to do much here, but you can see that none of the other objects have been turned green. So what we can do then is we could either select them one by one and just choose add to group. And now we have the option that we can see all the groups that are available in our scene. So we can choose add to group. Okay, that's all fine and dandy, but we wanna just add all of them. So let's just select all the objects. Then we'll select one of the group, one of the, the currently grouped objects as our primary selection. So it's the last object that we select. And we're just going to hit control shift G. And that will add all selected objects to the same group of the exist or of the primary selection. And so now they've all turned green. We can see that they all belong to the car group. So as we go through studying these, and notice that this is on the object level, not the, the data level. Uh, and this also allows other various things. So like if we now hit uh, shift G, we can select grouped uh, by you know objects that are in the same group. So we've got other different things that we can do with groups. So it's also handy for just modifying things within your existing scene. So you can see we've got our group controls from the object menu and group and these here. So these are very handy, but the real power of groups is uh, when linking these in. So let me now save this file. Now that all of these are added to the group, we're gonna save our file. And then we're gonna load a new file by hitting control N. And let's just delete everything that's in our current scene. And then I'm going to go up to the file menu and I'm going to choose link. In this link then, I'm going to go back one step. Actually, let's just go back to the beginning and we can see that we have our car sport dot blend. So we want to link in the group that is in the car scene uh, that we just created. So we're going to click on the car blend file and we can now see that there is a groups option in here because there's groups present in the blend file. So if I choose group, I can now see car is an option as a group. So I choose that and I click link and append from library. What this does then is that links that entire group into my scene as what's called a dupla group. And basically what it's done is it created an empty and then added that uh, on that empty, it's then added in a dupla group here under the duplication menu. And I'm gonna show you how to do this manually here in a moment. And then it set that group to be car. So now this whole group will update anytime that I modify or add objects to that grouped file. And in fact, let me just save this as an example. This is just going to be car, or we'll just say this uh, group test.blend. So now if I go back to my, my car file, and let's just add in, we'll give this a little monkey uh, dash figure. So if I just add this guy over here, make it a blender branded car. So I have my little, my little hood ornament now. And if I want to just add this to the group, I then just hold down shift, 
select one of the objects that's in that group, hit Control shift g and now my monkey has been added to said group. And I can now save my file, and if I go back by hitting Control shift o by the way, to open recent, and I go back to my group test, then we can see that that's automatically been updated with my new hood ornament. So the difference between linking an opinion, so rather than linking objects, if I link a group, it allows me to add any other object to that group at any point in time. Now do note though that I can't access anything within this group. I can't access the materials, I can't access the mesh, nothing, because it's all just tied in to this one object that allows me to use this as basically a grouped instance. And I can go through, I can duplicate this, I can then scale that down, I can rotate it. Very easy to then just work with the group as a whole. Uh, and this works very, very well. So to look at how this is actually created, let's just add in, say, a new empty. We'll just move it over here where we can see it. And then in the object properties, you can see under duplication, we have the option for group. If we choose group, we can then have a list of all the groups that are currently in our scene, whether they're linked or not. And if I choose car group, it'll immediately add that in. In the outliner, you can see that it has a group as in, illustrated by this icon here. And then it has within that group, all the different things that are being linked in. So this is makes it quite easy to see where the actual data is. So this makes it very easy to see exactly what we're doing and where everything is. Uh, and it makes it just very easy to work with entire objects as a whole. But this is the same process is actually even more powerful perhaps when working with linked materials. So let's save our file here real quick. And now let's just um, add in a new object and we're going to add in just another monkey. We'll move it over here. Uh, and let's imagine that we want to then, you know, we've set up a, a material library somewhere else on our file. Uh, and we're going to, I'm going to assume that we're using cycles for the time being for our render engine. And we've set up a, a material library that has all of our glass shaders. It has our brick shaders. It has all the different shaders that we've gone through and meticulously created. And that then we want to use throughout our entire large production, but that are very easy to update. Well, I have a file that I've used as an example here called material library cycles. So it's a cycles material library. And in this material library, then I have several different materials here, including car paint, an absorption glass, and a plastic shader. And each one of these then uh, you can find has been grouped. So one of the things that I didn't talk about in the, in the cycles demo was group shaders. So here we have this shader here, and let's just call it better glass. And I can see all of my settings here, but better glass is not a shader option. If I hit shift A and choose shader, that's not an option. But if I hit tab, I can see that this is just a group of nodes that then make up my shader and that then have exposed value in the side here. So I can choose any value here. I can just drag it over to the side and I can expose that value to then allow me to manipulate it outside of the group. This group is also named. And the very cool thing about this, by the way, you create these groups just simply by selecting the nodes. So if I add in, say, just a couple nodes here, select these and hit control G, it will create a new group out of that node. But the very, very cool thing about this is that these groups, just like any other group, can be linked into another file. So if I bounce back to my group test and I go into file menu and I choose link and in my material library here, I'm going to choose a uh, node tree. So these are uh, node groups are not included in the group category, but are included in the node tree category uh, since they're nodes. And we can now see all of my shader nodes, including better glass, blended box mapping, car paint, glass absorption. And these are not materials, these are node groups. And so these can be added to materials. You can also just link in the materials themselves. And you'll see that in the node trees, these also include the compositing nodes. And we're going to look at compositing just a little bit later uh, for the node-based compositor in Blender. But let's just focus on, say, the car paint. So if I choose car paint, I can now link that in. And nothing's changed. But if I now go over here and in the monkey, I add in a new material. And for the surface, rather than choosing diffuse, I can now see that I have a group option for car paint. And then that exposes all my existing, all my settings for that car paint shader. And if I go over to the node editor, we can see that we have car paint here. 
But the really cool thing about these grouped nodes is number one, you can see that it's linked and I can't go in and edit that group unless I localize it. So if I hit tab to edit the group, it'll ask me whether I want to localize it, but I don't because when we expose the settings in linked nodes or linked groups, group nodes, these settings are changeable without affecting the original data. So if I go through and I just say set the green color and maybe let's go ahead and set this rendering and I might have to set a background in here. So I set this rendering It's building the BVH and there it starts and we'll just increase the background so that we can see it. So I don't have any lights in my scene. It's just merely the environment. Um, I can go now and adjust any one of these settings that I've exposed in my shader without ever actually modifying it. And these settings will be saved without ever affecting the original group. So this makes it very easy to create linkable shaders that are very easy to update. And if I ever wanted to realize that crap, I need another color for my shader, or I need you know another setting, another variable, I can go back to my original material library, add that material to the, or that setting to the group, expose the setting in the left side, and then just like that, that setting will be propagated across to all other scenes that is linking in this node group data. So node groups or node groups and regular groups are very, very powerful in Blender for managing your assets. Now, I do want to show you just one last thing uh, with groups, and this is just with object groups, and it's a very easy way to edit these original ones. So when you're working on a large scene, like a large production environment or something, there's a very good possibility that you'll have hundreds of linked groups and going through and having to just quickly, you know, if you find crap, I need to modify the tires on this car or, you know, I want to delete my little hood ornament here because that's just silly. You know, I don't want to have to search through lots and lots of things just or lots and lots of files just to, just to quickly find the correct file. I merely want to say select this and I want to click edit and that's it. Well, there's a really wonderful add on that was written by Jason Van Gumster and it's included in Blender under the testing category, I do believe. Yes, and you just search for edit and it's edit linked library. If we toggle this down, we can see it. And we're just going to en enable it, close this. And now we can see in the toolbar here, we have edit linked library. So since this is an, a linked group, it's considered or linked library of sorts, uh, we can just select it, choose edit linked library. It will then save my existing file, find the original file, open that up, allow me to edit it, so we'll just delete the hood ornament. And then in the toolbar, we see return to original file. And in this case, uh, you can see it was grayed out because I didn't have any part of the group selected. So I select part of the group and I say return to original file. And just like that, my link has been updated. I've never had to save a file because it does autosave. Very, very easy to work with large numbers of linked groups within original file and edit them very quickly.